welcome everyone to Spark. Well, you can still adjust your hair, whatever you're doing okay. there. Make yourself look pretty. I just have to do my little intro. Okay. Welcome everyone to Spark the Genius. I'm your host, Spark the Genius, and I'm here to spark the genius within you today with the help of Sarah Lise MacArthur. Yes, I was going to be like Sarah. Well, actually, how else was I going to pronounce it? Lise, Lise, Lise. Everybody gets yeah. it wrong. It's a lot of Siri. Oh, like, like if you say. She calls like, me like Sierra Lies or Sierra Liz or something. Uh, so she's just jealous of your I acting know. career. Yeah, it's true. It's Whatever. So Sarah Lise McCarthy? MacArthur. MacArthur. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, famous actress. So famous you knew how to say my name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and we are on the top of a building in Toronto here. And uh, we thought that yeah, this would be a good place to do it. We've got the CN Tower right there, if you can yeah. see it. And uh, it's actually bigger in real life. Well, it is real life. It's just far away. That's how mm -hmm. perspective works. And um, what was I going to say? Genius. Yes, I am sp I'm the genius, hence my name. <laughs> and uh, we thought, so yeah, so if you hear sounds in the background, that's the wind of the city. It's the traffic of the, uh, the Don Valley Parkway. Oh, no, what is that? Yeah, I think so. The I don't know. No, the DVP is over there, and that becomes Lakeshore Drive Lakeshore. or something. I don't know. I don't Q have a car. QEW. Do you have a car? No. No. You're new to Toronto. Mm -hmm. You just moved here from New York. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, give a quick little intro, like drop some famous things you've done so people will know that they want to keep listening. Okay. Hi, I'm Sarah Lisa MacArthur. I am Nakota from Saskatchewan. I've been acting for like 25 years. Um, so basically since I was born. I was going to say, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm part of the furniture on CBC series over the years, so you could, might remember me from such projects as Arctic Air, Burden of Truth, uh, and then... Like, uh, there was something else I saw. Digstown. Yeah, Digstown. Pretty Hard Cases. And in your Instagram bio it says Outlander? I was in Outlander. I think that's um, my dad watches that. I had a pretty that. great yeah. role in that one. People remember it. It's season 4, episode 12. Is that people go back in time in that or something? Yeah. So wow. it was back in the time I played a Mohawk healer. Wow. Very, uh, spoiler alert, I die. That's what? Only in one episode. Oh, okay. It's That's a, a good death. I know. guess, yeah. You know what? They can always bring people back mm. if they need to. Well, they could because it's time travel, it's tra but yeah, they we'll haven't uh, approached me about that one. All right. Well, <laughs> if you're if, all the fans, if you write a letter to uh, whoever makes Outlander and be like, we need back our Mohawk healer. We or we could do a spin off, just a totally new show, completely oh. about me. I'd totally be into that. Yeah, that's true. Well, I mean, for yeah. example, that's what they did with Rogue One. They did a, like a prequel spin-off with the guy who yeah. we see blow up. And so it's like, you know, so yeah, we could have that. Or maybe just it's an alternate universe. It's like, you know what? She doesn't yeah. die in this one. Or maybe, you know what? She didn't really die. Whatever. Yeah. Or we'll just come up with a whole new character. We don't even need to be outlander. Great, right. it's true. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll write it. Have you ever written anything? Um, I'm kind of dabbling in it now, but I haven't written anything that's been produced yet. So, All you right. know, to, you know coming soon let's say have you ever thought of just filming something with your iphone or something like filming some scenes and be like here's proof of concept yes and we do we do things like that sometimes but it's not usually just with my iphone it is a little yeah, more like you're a bit of high end you're, you not, you're not like me with my iphone <laughs> selfie lens on a hey, tripod uh, this is how i do all my auditions okay yeah. that's good yeah yeah especially the commercial ones i can just use the selfie mode so you do so use the selfie mode i always want like i I, have I don't usually use oh, the don't. selfie mode because it distracts me and actually makes me um, right. super, like I always watch myself and like okay. I, I don't think that that's genuine, so. No, yeah, I, yeah that's yeah. the thing, because you realize, oh yeah, when I'm acting on TV or in something, I'm not seeing myself. Yeah, and acting is actually about telling the truth, you guys. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, so you must be a good liar. I'm like, actually, I suck at it. Sorry, but maybe you're lying when you say that. I, see, I mean, see I think it's about whether you believe it or not, and I only believe it when I'm like fully committed in like an acting. I don't know. It's just like it's a it's a different thing than real life. I get like if right. people like point blank me, like I get really really like just like I'll just say the truth, you know. Oh wow, that's good to know. Yeah. So if anybody wants to know what she's really thinking, just get just, in there. Yeah, just get right up in there and ask it, and I'll probably either be super shifty and say um a bunch and like look away or I'll just say what it really is. Oh man, do you want to play some poker later? I'll no, I clean you up there. no <laughs> yeah, yeah. definitely not. That's not Unless good. I have all the best cards then I can totally win but other than that. Right. I'm yeah. kind of like not good at playing games that are where I lose money. Or yeah, I lose no. at all but losing money makes it. No, those more. are very upsetting. I don't yeah. like, you never, I mean, yeah, it's just really upsetting and how much could you possibly win anyways? And then if you're like that, like, you know, you see all these movies about gamblers and Vegas, and they just gonna lose the money afterward. They never know when to quit, and then they throw it all away. And then yeah, I'd like, rather just uh, buy some shoes, you know, save yeah. up and get something I like. Exactly, work hard, mm -hmm. make that money, 
That's awesome. So where are you from originally? From Regina, Saskatchewan. Oh, nice. Uh, my community is Pheasant Karump, Nakoda. It sounds better in our language. It's Shiana Day, Nakoda Oyade. Wow. Yeah. And so that's where you were born and like grew uh, up? Or, that's, or no, Regina's that's, a city. Yeah, Regina's so you weren't a on city. A, yeah, yeah. It's a small city. Yeah. But it's a city. Yeah. That's cool. And then uh, when did you leave Regina? When I was 18 years old, the day after I graduated from high school. Well, but you said you've been acting forever. Were you still, were you acting in Regina, yeah. like in high school? Yeah, I got my first role. I'm not going to tell you when, but I was pretty young and it was on a CBC uh, miniseries. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that, yeah, so you have, you're, you are a CBC kind yeah. of person. That's so cool. Yeah. And then, so you graduate high school and you're like, okay, I need to. Get out of here. Sorry, guys. guys. Yeah. No, there's, yeah. No, there's only so many CBC miniseries in Regina. At that time. And then yeah. there actually was like a brief period where it was getting really busy there. And then politics, things changed. Um, they're trying to rebuild it now, though, and I'm actually a part of that. So, um, I guess the segue is now that I'm I'm a producer now, and I am continuing to emerge as a producer. Wow! And uh, I'm working on um, producing my friend Ruben Martel's second feature, that is a drama, and we're hoping to shoot um, in Northern Saskatchewan in 2024. And it's called A Life Less Empty. So we're, we're, we're kind of trying to help revitalize it. And I also heard recently or read recently that uh, there's uh, the volume being built in Regina at the soundstage, which is basically what they shot out, uh, what they shot Avatar on. What? Yeah. So it's, it's like a three, like a 360 projected green screen. Wow. So it's not a green screen really, but it's like it, it works like a green screen yeah, yeah. that the actors can actually interact with what is going to so look similar to what you're going the world you're going to be right, in. Right, right. So you can see the dinosaur running at you or something. Yeah, yeah, and you can see the oh. whole world. Right. So yeah, that's the new one and and it's really bizarre cuz there's only last I checked there's one in London, England, uh, LA and Vancouver. And then and there, then Regina? There's going to be one in Regina. I wonder why they decided to do that. I have no idea. I think they're just really trying to rebuild the film industry and it's right. taking a long time. So they thought that would kind of just it. Yeah, the government's like, here, let's, what do you, what do you need? Let's, yeah. let's do this. Yeah, I just think like it's important for every place to have a film tax employment credit um, because it, it creates a lot of jobs and career opportunities. And when you grow up and and you interact with people or see it happening around you, you think like, oh, this could be a possibility for me. And it doesn't mean that you have to be in front of the camera. You can be behind the scenes um, and there's all sorts of different jobs. Like you could learn how to run uh, the volume. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, and so I just think that it's good to give young people um, kind of like exposure to possibilities for the future. I love it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you're producing you're inspiring the youth of the future mm -hmm. so you might be going back to Regina to help with that or something yeah you know, exactly that'd be my like giving back kind of thing wow mm -hmm. and then you went to, so where'd you go from Regina did you go right to New York yeah wow I did but I've moved around since then so I lived there for three years went to musical theater college there it was really fun did some modeling that was also fun oh my god um and at the time, I was like, oh my god, like all, all these shows that I watch are all shot in Vancouver, and I'm not on any of them. So I thought, <laughs> I thought, why don't I just move to Vancouver and try to do the acting thing and focus on that more. So I did that for a couple of years. Then I got bored again, and I was like, I think I'm going to get my master's degree in acting in England. So Jeez. I did that. Um, it only takes like one year. Huh. So I only did it for one year, but it was a great, it yeah. was an awesome experience. It was called East 15 Acting School at wow. the University of Essex. My God. Yeah. Is that like, like is, it, is it like an old school, like is it like a bricks, is it like Harry Potter's little castle kind of thing? Yeah, sure. Sure, whatever. Yeah. But it's England. That's so yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, no, it was cool. That that was the cool part. And like, I lived in London, so I got to do all the oh London-y like, stuff. And, um, it was a really great year. And then um, I moved to LA for one year and uh, that wasn't awesome for me. Why not? <laughs> it was still before like being an ethnic actor was in and there was just not a lot of work. There weren't a lot of auditions. It was also like part of the like that like the tail end of the 08 to 2010 crash. Right, right. So, so nobody had any jobs. Like, yeah, yeah. It was, 
I mean, it was fun, but it wasn't great. I, so. I guess it's always tough. I mean, there's everybody who wants to act goes there, so it's not yeah. like, you know, and you're a giant. In some ways, I'm glad that I went there just to kind of get the lay of the land and, like, understand what it was and what it is and yeah. how I, that applies to me, you know. And then, um, and then I moved to Toronto for a number of years and uh, had a good run here. Yeah. And uh, then decided I missed New York so much, so I moved back there. Wow. Six years ago, and now I'm back here again in Toronto. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's so cool because those are all places I've always wanted to live. Like, oh, I wish I lived in New York, I wish I lived in LA, I wish I'd been in England. So now you've done it. You can say, yeah. at least you've experienced it. You know what it's like. You're not always having FOMO going, oh, should I have gone there? That's or this true. And that. that was kind of like the last, like, when I was deciding to move to New York the last time, I was like, if I don't go now, I'll probably never go. Yeah. And even though I'd lived there already, I like knew like I wanted to have a different experience this time and more. And yeah. And I was just like, you know what, I have to go now, or else I probably never will. And then I'll live my life regretting it. And now I don't live my life regretting it. Yeah, that's the thing. Like I, I was just telling you, I think maybe it's 12 years ago now. Somebody offered me a job at an ad agency in Times Square, like mm -hmm. doing doing ads for Broadway shows and now that I'm like that'd be kind of fun but I was like mm, I don't know I just want to go to New York on my own terms and not have a job but but it just never happened. You want so a I, job in New York. What, you, do, you do want a job? Yeah it's yeah, expensive yeah of course. What, what am I talking about? <laughs> and then all my life like people have been like why aren't you in LA yet? I'm like oh I don't know I just never packed it like just to try it and now so yeah now I've been like ugh. But this is good because now anytime I feel like well is Toronto boring or I can call you and be like no I've been in LA it's not that great like it's Toronto's cool. Or, yeah. Yeah, that's what you'll tell I me. I mean, so. I might move back to LA eventually too. All know? right. Well, if you go, I'll come be your roommate. I'll live on your okay, couch, your cool. basement, or something. Yeah, we'll have like a drop-in center in the living yeah. room. Because I feel like now, I mean, the internet's been around for a while, but now it's like you can do so many things with your phone and the internet and message. So I feel like if you're in LA, you can be messaging everybody, like and filming stuff, like making connections. It's not like oh, I got to go sit in a coffee shop and hopefully I'll bump into a director or something. Like, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And a lot of my friends that had been living in LA, um, they kind of left the city recently because of you know obviously the pandemic and it just it wasn't necessary anymore because they really aren't doing that many in-person auditions. Even Interesting. Now. So it's all that's yeah. see that's good to know too because I know a lot of people are fleeing to Florida because like they they like the government there better or whatever. Uh, I just spent a couple of months in Miami, and they have a little film community and uh, comedy community. It's it's kind of like Toronto. It's like, or maybe even less than that. Like less there's than here. Yeah. This is like one of the busiest centers. It's just so busy. I mean, you were yeah. just at TIFF. It was like yeah. insane. And a lot of those films were shot here, even some of the bigger ones. Wow. Um, so yeah, there's no yeah. there's no need to be anywhere. I remember years ago, my friend Phil was a commercial director shooting commercials I wrote, and he was like, you know what? He met a girl in Calgary and just moved there with her. and. And he's like, I can do my pitches remotely. I don't need to be in Toronto. And that was like 10 years ago. It was before like you could really do things. Yeah, online. like I love living in cities. Um, and there is a there is an element in LA where sometimes there's like guest stars that come up on series that shoot there and they're like, you have to be local and like yeah. we're going to check. And it's like, oh, okay. I saw an audition for that for last week. They were looking for somebody for a Montreal I don't know, Canada Post commercial or print ad or something. It must be Montreal local, but I guess that's like tax things. Or it's tax, yeah. For here in Canada, it's very, very specific. I'm not really sure what the big deal was in um, in LA, but I think it's just uh, it, COVID-related stuff, probably. Yeah. They don't want to have to like risk flying someone in and then they're testing positive and then they have to get someone else and like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. And I guess... Yeah. I mean, there's enough people in LA that can be like, listen, we'll, we'll, we don't need to deal with flying people in or paying for a hotel or you're not. Yeah, around. and I think it's only fair. I mean, like, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's good actually. If you're gonna sacrifice and like do the LA thing so you could yeah. be there, then you might as well get some more opportunities, you know? Yeah, I remember I was in LA once years ago. Uh, I think I was just crashing on a friend's couch and writing my screenplay, and I went for some voice audition, and they really liked me, and that, but. And I didn't hear back for a couple of days. I was like, all right, I'll fly back to Toronto because I'm supposed to. And, and, but then they emailed, like, okay, you have a call back. I'm like, well, okay, I, I have something to do this week. I'm shooting a commercial here, but I, I, I can come back to LA for the recording. They're like, no, no, we, you have to be here for the call back. I mean, it's a voice job. Can't you just call me on the phone? Like, you just heard me improvise for 10. The, direct, the casting director was so mad and wrote something in a newsletter saying, you know, here's an example. If you're not leaving town, you have to let us know. And I was like, so yeah, so they, they like you there, I guess. They want to feel. 
That sounds intense. That was intense. Yeah. I, I don't know why I'm still yeah. we're thinking about this well, 15 years it later. Sounds stressful. <laughs> yeah. It's like kind of dumb that they were. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they put nearly that kind of stress anymore because they do know that they can do everything remotely now. Yeah. So, so there we go. Because yeah. even 10 years ago, maybe not 10, maybe eight, something like that. I my friend Tony moved to New York. He's a voice actor and. He's the voice of CBC TV, so, you know, tonight nice. on CBC, no, radio, no, yeah, TV. Um, but, uh, yeah, eventually he just moved to New York, and he's still doing a lot of stuff remotely. And we were trying to figure out, yeah, there's a wasp playing around. How can we do a podcast together? And he was going to have to buy some $3,000 software so we could record each other remotely. But now you can, you know, yeah. Zoom or so Reverside. Easy. Yeah, so easy. Oh, my gosh. It's gotten so much easier. Even people in the same city as me, we just record. Like, I interviewed a guy. I was on the bus couple of days ago and he was walking around downtown like we're in the same city but we're just recording over Skype it didn't look great but you know that's Skype on the phone like if we are using Wi-Fi or whatever mm-hmm. it's all good so yes all right we're in Toronto we're doing good uh, you've got your little dog happy running around yeah. here speaking of voice work I'm also the voice of Thunderbird on Rainbow Six Siege Rainbow so, Six Siege yeah it's Ubisoft Tom Clancy oh that's a video game yeah video game good lord yeah. Wow. So, like, what's what does your voice sound like? What, what sounds what's your exactly character? like me? And what? Sorry. Actually, you like? no. I use a lower register, but it's me. I'm gonna kill you now. It's like, actually they said out of all of their characters that my character voice is the closest to how I actually sound. Wow. I'm like I can do accents and voices, you guys. I just. I mean, I if mean, you can be your natural self, it's yeah. even better. You don't have to always yeah. think, of, what's my accent? The really cool part about it was that they modeled the character's indigenous background on my actual cultural background. Wow. So they, like, cast me with that in mind, and then they they found out, like, asked me to explain what my cultural background was. Then they went away and sourced, like, uh, elders and cultural advisors and helped, had them, like, help build the character um, and her background and um, a lot of different elements about her and then um, came back to me and I'm like dang you guys know more than I do now wow and you're all like oh I couldn't find any roles for ethnic people and now they're like you know building your culture into the video game yeah it was really it was I was like wow I'm really glad I stuck it out in the industry <laughs> sorry oh, that's I was my like, very <laughs> vicious dog yeah, sorry yeah. sorry happy happy, happy. happy. happy that's just I'll a be right back. all right I um, <laughs> I'll edit this part out. All right, we're back. And this is the vicious happy that you saw barking, attacking the the woman who came upstairs. He's so fluffy. He's so cute. He's a really good guard dog. Yeah, he's very loud and very soft. He's well-groomed. Yeah. You were just saying you've had him for six years and he's eight? Yeah. Where was he for two years before that? With his ex-mama. Oh. Well, (laughs) I'm sure he loves being with you. Yeah. He doesn't remember her. No. Yeah. Does he ever do, do you ever send him to auditions if they're looking for dogs or anything? He's not really like a show dog type, unfortunately. No. I wish he was. Well, that seems like kind of fake. You know, dogs aren't made to yeah. show dogs. And he can do and like tricks and stuff, so yeah. he could do that, but he's just like, he has yeah. stranger danger yeah, and he yeah. gets nervous and whatever. I understand. I have that too. Mm-hmm. So we won't send him to the dog park. No. Oh, that's fun. He'll like his. Was he in New York? I guess he was. That must have been crazy. Central Park. Oh my that gosh. Was his old backyard. Wow. Can you imagine? Like, how do you go back from living like walking around Central Park to here? Well, like I said, there's this really nice park nearby. Oh, that's right. You were just telling it's me. Brand new. It's like a yeah. mini, 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 mini Central Park. Sure. Um, there's tons of dogs, so he doesn't actually seem to mind at all. Yeah, he doesn't know the difference. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like whatever. And I guess you know what? I mean, does Drake live here? I don't know. There's got to be people who don't have to live here, and they do. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll I don't see. know. People live here. I don't know if Drake lives here. Actually. I mean, he's got a home in the bridal path, I'm sure, or something. Yeah, he's probably got lots of homes. Like I don't know. I was, I'm always telling the story. Like, when I was in Miami, I made friends with this guy at the Nobu Hotel, and he was showing me, like, oh, across the little river here, that's uh, DJ Khaled's house. And he'll, he'll rent a room here and come across the river mm. and just have a party for 14 grand a night at the hotel or whatever, and then go back. And so, yeah, I guess people live in Miami. They, you know, I don't know. You can live anywhere. Yeah, people live here. Yeah, there's people. Yeah. And there's lots, I mean, there's, I mean, it's pretty, I mean, it's the fourth largest city in North America. It's it still is. pretty big. The only downside A lot of people is, don't know that. No. That people it's would really like. It's really funny. Yeah. And Taylor Swift's coming here. Like mm-hmm. that. So. Get all the stuff. Yeah. yeah we've got, I mean, you're not missing anything. They've got Just for Laughs next week. TIFF is like the biggest film festival, I guess. Mm-hmm. So yeah. What are we, what are we complaining about? 
All the love stars it. come here. Yeah, we love it. We love it here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And you can just fly. We're saying, you know, Porter Airport. I just saw a little clip on the TIFF Instagram of uh, Ethan Hawke saying, I love the, the Billy Bishop Airport. It's like, yeah. He took the bus here this time. Yeah. His flights kept getting canceled. I saw that. And he's like, screw it. I took the bus to New York. When I swore I'd never do that again. Yeah. Like, I'm, you can't I'm sleep on it. I'm amazed that he did it. Wow. Yeah. Imagine sitting there, you go, oh, it's Ethan Hawke. I've done Hawk. it a couple times, too. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, I... Yeah, I went once with this this girl I was dating, and she likes to go to New York, and we took the bus. But you have to like, even if you try to sleep, which you can't, you have to go through the border at three in the morning. And then she was getting in a fight with the with the the uh, customs woman. The customs was like, "Well, how can you go to New York for a month?" She's like, "Why do I have to tell you?" I'm like, "Just tell her you're a teacher, for God's sake! Like, don't get in this fight." And then on the way back, yeah. Anyways, I I always swore I gotta have enough money and just do that hour flight instead of a twelve hour bus. But I like buses, so we'll see. Maybe it's better now. And that was probably before you could just watch Netflix on your phones. So the time would fly faster, you know. Yeah, it's good to take the overnight one. So yeah, just, but you but have, have you been able off. to sleep? Uh, yeah, but not that well. No, then I feel like you. The next day is like a write off. It's like you it just, is. It yeah. is. I just fly. Honestly, yeah. it just it's so much less time. And yeah, exactly. It's not that much more money, although. Prices are all going up now. So yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how it works. We just got to get rich. You just yeah, got to get some exactly. more, more Outlander yeah. shows. Yeah. Like so, so when you were doing your voice thing, was that like, did they motion capture you, or are they filming I you do this thing? I didn't do the motion capture. That was like a pandemic, uh, you know, sacrifice because oh. I was in New York and they were doing the mocap in Montreal, and there's all these restrictions, and they didn't yeah. want to pay extra for that. So like, um, you but, know. But the, that's cool. They still used your voice, and then had yeah. somebody else move around or yeah. whatever. Wow. So for yeah, maybe for the sequel they'll use you or they'll be stuck I with wanna, you. I wanna. Yeah. yeah. I wanna. I, I wanna do some mocap. Hey, yeah. Ubisoft. Well, remember me? I wanna do some mocap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think my cousin works there, so we'll. I'll, yeah. I'll drop there you some go. Names <laughs> for you. And then then you'll all be like experienced. You can be like, oh, you know, I'll you'll go use the vision or what did you call it? The the, the, volume. the volume. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll be like, I'm all good. Guys. Yeah. Wow. See, so you're the future here. You're gonna be the next Avatar. All that. Avatar. I should have been the first one, probably. But yeah, I know. The next I mean, one anyway. Avatar, they're all like indigenous, whatever I they're know. supposed to be. The Navi. Yeah. I haven't seen the new one yet. They I've... should have a little bit more Ooh. North American indigenous inclusion. But I think the um, the series ones that they're making and the vo the cartoons and stuff are gonna be a little bit more inclusive. All right, you'll be you'll be on that. Yeah. Oh my God. Sure. See, so, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I keep they keep offering like. Um, actor and stuff they, they offer courses and like hey, learn how to do motion capture and all this because everybody wants to do that and you're just getting these things thrown at you so i like that, I <laughs> uh, like that. i've only been doing it for 25 years but yeah yeah no you know, i know it makes everybody's waiting i've been waiting patiently every time yeah, yeah. Uh, once in a while you get a good one and you're like yay yeah and is this what you do full time or do you have to have like another job while i'm you're... a producer also oh yeah and so like what does that mean it means that i have to do a lot of paperwork which is for annoying. a production company or your own production it's my production company Okay, but so I still. usually partner with other production companies as well, yeah. and it's just, it's really a lot of learning. It's a lot of festivaling, which is really fun. Wow, like what um, festivals do you go to? Um, well, I was recently at Fantasia, so they did this thing called the Frontiers Market, and uh, that was really a really awesome experience, and meeting so many, like, uh, industry professionals, a lot of sales agents, and, and really just doing it more from the business end. Yeah. Um, it's very different as a producer to attend film festivals than as just an actor. So now I'm getting a lot more out of it. Yeah, I would think, because like, mm -hmm. you're actually walking around networking, like you're there for yeah. a reason. You're not just like, oh, I'm going to a party. Like you're, you're selling things, you're yeah, making connections, you're having dinners. Yeah, connections and knowing what other companies are out there and if you might want to partner with them at some point and them knowing you and like what you're up to and that kind of stuff. It's yeah, all so cool. Part of the machine. Oh, I got to be your little your little assistant and okay, start Okay, sure. Once you have money for that, I will. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. It's all, everything's, <laughs> everything's money. Now I'm realizing everything Sucks. is money. Because time is money too, but yeah. then sometimes you can't afford the time or yeah. vice versa, you know? Like I want to hire an assistant to just post my interviews for me, yeah. but then, uh, yeah. yeah, I don't Probably. know. I, uh, there's this woman um, who I've seen at TIFF every year. She does little interviews on the red carpets for her own little show. I keep saying little, but she's got like a brochure with all her viewers and stuff. So she had me over for Rosh Hashanah lunch yesterday. And, oh, nice. And she's like, hey, you, you're monetizing your interviews? I'm like, no. She's like, you got to monetize. I'm like, how? She's like, you got to have a package that you offer sponsors. She's screaming. I'm like, what does that mean? How do I get a package? I'm not going to tell you. I'm like, okay. So apparently I have to have a package. Like, you know, like saying, I guess it would be, I will mention you in every video or I'll wear your clothing. Or yeah, I'll put it's you hard. In the like, that's the part thing about yeah. producing too. It's a lot of like self motivated, kind of like selling and yeah. uh, schmoozing and like, uh, uh, you know, 
like kind of pitching people on things and yeah. and uh, that's that's great it's a really good skill it's just like yeah sometimes you're like I don't know if I feel like it right now yeah just like can I just have a paycheck and somebody hands <laughs> yeah. me my money and says tell me what to do why not but you're making your own empire yeah exactly but it's kind of inspiring that you're a producer and you're, you know you're creating your own shows and you're acting in video games you're doing voice acting you're doing everything thank wow. you wow try to be very diverse that was always my like Thing, yeah, you know. I guess that's good. You know, it's like diversifying your stock portfolio. Yeah, so I do you know. theater and I'm glad that like right wow. now I'm not focusing on theater because I'm so busy with producing, but it's like, um, you know, we're in this strike and it is like really affecting Canadian production. And mm. it's like, well, at least I know how to do theater if I need to, you know. Yeah, you could fall back on that. Yeah, so it's always good to be diverse. Wow, mm -hmm. so that's your that's your advice to the kids out there. Yeah, Have lots I mean, of I guess skills. what people refer to it now is like um, alternate income streams. Yeah, multiple income streams. Yeah, yeah, that's what they say. You gotta have yeah bits of because yeah you can't rely on one if one thing falls apart. Well, okay, I've got this, I've got that, I've got this. Yeah. Because even people with jobs, they're like that's not you know you could lose your job nothing's, in a second. Nothing's can't guarantee no. anymore, especially in this day and age. So. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so it's exciting because I was like, oh, why am I not in LA? Why am I not doing one thing? But you know, I can see that even somebody like you with Hazel, you're always working on different things. You're always hustling. You're mm -hmm. living in different cities. Yeah, and I would do so, side gigs yeah. too. It's just that like sometimes you have to like balance out: is it worth my time, or yeah, um, should I just be focusing on the big picture right now? And hopefully that'll pay off. Like yeah, because everything has like a cost as well you can say okay I'm gonna go work at Starbucks but that's okay eight hours that you're not writing your screenplay or doing you're auditions tired, or, and then like it yeah kind of start taking over your life and it right. was always hard to balance as a young actor um, so I'm fortunate that I'm in the position where I don't have to side gig at the moment but I am yeah. not above it at all especially the state that we are in with our industry yeah um, I probably will soon but I'm like you know trying to keep busy also I forget who I was talking to recently I guess it was, uh, maybe it was this week or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe it was the guy I was staying with, this comedian, and he's like, oh, yeah, you, well, actor's on strike. I'm like, is actor on strike? He's like, they're on strike for like 16 months. I'm like, what? I'm for, actor. Uh, Did I, or is it commercials? Commercials, yeah. actor commercials are, have been on strike. I know. Because I, I, I was complaining, I haven't heard an audition for my agent in months, and I didn't realize we were on strike. My agent had to tell me, too. I came back up here in like um, May or something, um, and we had a new commercial agent, and Again, like it wasn't, so when I lived in Canada before, they were not really into diversity in commercials. And it was like very, very specific and they certainly weren't hiring indigenous people. So a lot has changed. Yeah, I can't um, be, I mean, it's, it's basically only, you know, that now. Yeah, I mean, it's still like, it's, it's still, I think it's just that you guys are having not all the slots, sorry, you guys, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the, the slots are more um, evenly dispersed now. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, indigenous is seen as something cool and interesting. And before that, it was just like, we're not, we weren't a demographic worth like, mm -hmm. you know, trying to sell to. So they didn't include us. And so I, I just got like, I only had like maybe two commercial auditions a year when I lived here the first time. Um, so I wasn't used to having them. So then I went to go talk to my um, new commercial agent um, who's new at the agency. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, you guys have been on strike <laughs> for a year. And I was like, we, what? <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Okay, so it's not just me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was going to say. But I guess we're yeah. back now. It's like an interim thing. There's still a few oh. companies that are holding out. but. Um, yeah, every now and then I get an email. It's like, we're boycotting Wendy's or something. Like we are? Or yeah, we're, we're I mean, because they only so. hire redheads anyway, so I'm good. <laughs> like, oh. I was by boycotting them already. Right. Well, oh, <laughs> I have red hair, sort of. I used to. I don't know. All right. I can play Wendy. Well, Wendy, yeah. You yeah. could. You could. You should. You true. could argue that. I'm going to be, yes. You know? All right. I'm going to demand. Gender a, neutral casting, gender uh, blind casting. Absolutely. All yeah. right. Well, maybe I'll just start filming auditions. Like, I'll put on TikTok. You should Here probably I am as Wendy. put. Be, you should. And then people I will think just that'd be discover great. me. Mm -hmm. You ever see this girl on TikTok that just. I'll start, do Wendy, too. I'll okay. get, like, one of those Anna oh. Green Gables. Wigs. Yes. Oh yeah. my gosh, we could make videos together as the Wendy's. Yeah. We're like, and we'll just be eating our burgers and we'll just keep filming in Wendy's. I'm going to steal this idea. Just, you know. I know, we're going to see a commercial. You should like actually it. just write it. That's true. And then we can both be in it, right? Like as a commercial? Yeah. I guess, but I mean, you can't, you can't just, I mean, I'd have you to like, work for the, they'd have to be a client of mine to actually shoot, or I could just write it and pitch it to them and say, here, this is our spot. I think we should just shoot it and then it's easier yeah. for people to see it. Like, yeah, oh, there it is, sure. They, isn't that what like Ocean Spray did? Didn't they just license, uh, you know, that guy? That guy, the skateboarder? Yeah. Like it just, yeah, yeah it yeah. probably did. Mm -hmm. What was the, did you know that guy? What is this deal? 
he's he was just a guy and now yeah. he's kind of famous so yeah so all you have to do he's might as well an indigenous guy actually he yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. so that now he's huge so yeah like he uh for those of you who don't know i guess he just filmed videos of him on like an electric skateboard or something just holding a bottle of ocean spray with like stevie nicks playing in the background and then he somehow blew up i don't know what was interesting. Perfect people, timing. <laughs> yeah. and he captured something yeah, awesome. The Geist. And it was felt, right like, when, like, vibe. yeah, when when TikTok was first becoming a thing. Yeah, you got to get everyone. in early on these platforms. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I blew up uh, a couple of days ago. I filmed oh. a little video um, about uh, a speed dating I went to on Wednesday, and okay. I just came out. I'm like, hey, I went to speed dating, and it was really good. I recommend it. And yeah, it's got like 33,000 views now, and uh, wow. and. I don't know, that's pretty good. And then I did one about a strawberry frappuccino I had at Starbucks last uh, in the fall, and that blew up. I got 2.4 million views. Like that's Amazing. how I got my 6,000 followers from there you my go. little coffee. So you never know. I just keep throwing things out there. It seems things TikTok, especially, you can really take off on there. Like nice. as, as opposed to on Instagram, it's harder to go viral or whatever. So, mm. so maybe our Wendy's thing will blow up. Yeah. We could even go live too, because now that I have my thousand followers, you can go live and get tips and be like, hey. It's, it's coaching with Sarah Lees and Spark the Genius yeah, here, and true. we can be giving advice to the youths. I'm a little bit like, um, I'm not a Luddite, but I just yeah. haven't crossed into the... That's all right. I'm a millennial, so I'm just like not quite you're, on the train yet. You're not Gen Z. You're not born a into Gen this Z. Stuff. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm so old, I come all the way back around. I'm like starting at one again or something. I just love technology and stuff. It's, I mean, know. it's really funny when people like like my uh, my brother-in-law. He's um, he's a Gen X, and he has a lot of followers on TikTok. Oh, really? So he, he's a pilot. Oh, okay. Um, and he like flies his own little planes, like just ah. for fun. And so he posts his like flying videos, and he has like tons of followers. And I'm like, oh. I guess he knows how. Well, that's what I realize now too, because I always said, "Oh, you got to be like this cool actor, or comedian." But any job now, people can go on TikTok. There's bus drivers that show their daily thing, or there's a lot of you know sexy cops sitting there with their tattoos. But it could be anything. Like I'm a pilot. Here's my pilot video, so I can go live. I can show my daily pilot thing. So that's kind of interesting because it makes you realize, oh yeah, even if I'm doing like a, a normal boring job or something, I can make it interesting. Here I am as the janitor. Here's what I'm doing. Like so yeah, if anybody has a desire to be creative, like it sort of just opens up the technology. Like yeah. Yeah, I like that. It kind of like um, diversifies you, things. And you could even just be, you know, vlogging every day. Here's what, uh, you know, what it's like to be a multifaceted creative type. You know, oh, what I'm producing today, and and there's a plane flying over us. Maybe it's your brother-in-law. Got pontoons. It looks like that's the kind of thing you'd see, like landing in a CBC show. Like here we are landing. Actually, with... yeah, because I was in Arctic Air and we were. There you on go. Those exactly. planes before. Were you, and were you actually on a real Arctic Air plane? Like you no. know, no, you were like in a green screen. Like here I am. Yeah, we were it had like a, just like the, in, you it was part of a plane. Yeah, like yeah. a shaking. But it's green screen, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I mean, I guess that would make more sense than being in a plane. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Tom Cruise actually in space for some reason. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You've done it all. Oh my gosh. I wonder if you're ever going to have your face like giant on the CBC building kind of thing. You should. You could. I know some people like this guy, Kim Brunhuber, I went to school with in grade eight and now he's like a reporter and his face is on there. And this guy, Steve Patterson, I went to copywriting school with now he's host the debaters and his big head is there so oh, i feel like i'm good now luck. i have a new goal yeah, so, yeah exactly this you. is it also i gotta like rub your head or something yeah that's how that. it works uh, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe i should see i should start selling it <laughs> i'm gonna sell this hat on ebay now because you touched it it's okay. like yeah, it's well, sarah lee's hat that's actually no great. i gotta keep this my good luck hat yeah whatever also it's protecting you from the sun so. that's yeah that's the thing I, I would take it off to look so cool but i'm like I, yeah, i'll burn up like a <laughs> I'll just blow up like a vampire whatever wow. cool so now that tiff's over what's next for you um i'm gonna go to the sudbury cinefest there's a sudbury cinefest yeah my first time going somebody just told me today i was messaging them it was some filmmaker and they said, oh yeah, I, I would, but I'm in Halifax and I'm flying to Sudbury now. So maybe that's what they're going for. Cause I yeah. was like, why would you be going yeah, to Sudbury? Yeah, and you should look at the flights right now. They've gone crazy. So uh, we're gonna get driven up there. So what is Sudbury Cinefest? Um, it's actually very, as far as I can tell, very like uh, businessy, like industry focused as well, so which is cozy. nice. It's smaller um, and they're focusing on the Northern Ontario uh, films that get made up there. And so, oh. uh, yeah, but not just that, like a bunch yeah. of other films. And sure, so anything, I actually yeah. have two films that I, two feature films that I'm the lead in. Well, one that I'm the lead and one that I'm a lead. Um, and wow. uh, that, that are showing well, there? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. So you're going to be on red carpets there? I guess and so. And you'll be networking as a producer? And yeah. 
God. And then we're doing a panel. You're going to be on a panel? A panel. Oh. Yeah, about the kind of like the changing landscape of being a BIPOC filmmaker. Oh my God. You're on the mm -hmm. cutting edge of everything. Yeah, it's funny. It's like the, you know, things get to go. Yeah, things yeah. Things start going, they go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for. I don't want to and keep you up I'm here. I'm probably gonna be filming more. in Winnipeg after that. Of course you are. What are you, what are you filming in Winnipeg? Um, it is called Many Wounds. Many Wounds. Mm -hmm. And what is that? It's an indie. Like um, a like feature. yeah like uh, very dramatic. So it's uh, a, a reimagining of Once Were Warriors. Ah, uh, and that was a what's, Maori film. A Maui, and so is that yeah. Australia? Uh, New Zealand. New Zealand, right? Of course. Maori. Wow. Mm -hmm. So they're reimagining it like as if it was Canadian indigenous? Yeah. yeah. Is indigenous the right word to say? Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> There's a few words that you can still say. That what can you say? First Nations. Okay, that's okay. All right. For me it is. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Um, indigenous is uh, a little more all-encompassing, although I really hate it when people use a lowercase i because then it makes it sound like we're like a plant or something, you know? <laughs> it's like every species. other race of person. Yeah, black, use. even white on yeah, CNN. It's yeah. like the black cop. But they'll be like indigenous. I'm like, well, you guys, I'm not like a dandelion or something. Like that. <laughs> indigenous. It's like, yeah. look, it's an indigenous species of Canada. <laughs> no, right. I'm indigenous. Yeah, yeah. Capital I, man. So I don't know. I feel like it's just that thing that it never has stopped like changing. And yeah. I think it's going to keep on doing that. Because people are going to get like, oh no, that one's actually not the right one, so let's change. I feel like, yeah, because what was I thinking recently? I just feel like they're always making new things. It's almost to keep you on your toes. Yeah. Like, like a, even we were, I just met you at the uh, uh, Imaginative Festival, and everybody opens it off with, like, you know, first the acknowledging the land and all that, and then I guess saying their ethnicity, but then also describing what they're wearing. And I guess the idea there is that oh, yeah. there's somebody who can't see, mm -hmm. oh, I can picture Sarah wearing a black blazer or whatever. Right. But and I guess... Yeah, I mean, no, that's, that's great yeah. too. I mean, it is important. So I feel like there's always going to be new things. I like, would oh, always be you... dropping like which indigenous designer I'm wearing. I was like, I'm wearing oh, Kate Looking good. Horses, brand new dress that she designed. You can go to KateLookingHorse.com. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not wearing that right now. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> but, so if, you, if you're blind and can't see this, that, she's not I was wearing just, that. But you should go to her website you anyway. Should. She's awesome. And then would she be like a sponsor? Could she be a sponsor? Is that your package? You'd be like, I'm going to drop the name of the dress. But I mean, you're trying yeah, to support she, her. Yeah, we, we are. Um, she already thing? gives me stuff. She's okay. Like, we're already good. Okay. Yeah. So we somebody, support each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She gives you the dresses. If somebody says, hey, you know, Sarah yeah. Lisa sent me, like, oh, really? All right. You get a special yeah. discount. You get a little kickback on your. Yeah, your, you know. Yeah. It's all She's good. She's my relative. Ah, uh, so. she is. Uh, you are? Right? Okay, so this is good. You keep it in the family. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, we say relative when we mean, like, Oh. Of my people. Okay, so like, like Steven Spielberg, some Jewish. Like, is he my relative? Yeah. All right. So yeah, Steven. But even if he was like, it would be even closer if he was like your, a Toronto Jewish guy. Yeah, yeah. There's probably yeah. And that would be. He's relative. pretty a distant relative, but I yeah. feel like who am or I? Or where are you from? Sorry. You're yeah, Toronto, Toronto. 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 Yeah. yeah. So like, um, Drake is like half Jewish from Toronto. There you go. Uh, Drake is my, your relative. Man. Drake's my brother. I can yeah, call, like, call my brother. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's Yeah, that you can. You can just call anyone your sister or your brother now. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I don't goes. know if he'll call you a bag, but you no, know, no. you could call him that. I feel like I'll be canceled. Might not go well for yeah. you. No, let's leave that alone. I'll find some other. But, um, yeah. Larry David, Seth Rogen. He's Canadian Jew. Yeah, he there you go, Seth. Yeah. Seth. He's your brother. There, oh, you want to hear my <laughs> Seth Rogen story? Yes. Okay, so I was, uh, this girl that liked going to New York, she actually was in New York, and I was, uh, for some reason, I was staying in her apartment in Toronto, like uh, over like near uh, Osington. And so, and they were shooting this movie, Take This Waltz. Um, yeah, I remember that one. On, like the, it. on the street with Michelle mm -hmm. Williams. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing this rickshaw scene where they would go down the street pulling a rickshaw and then he walked back up. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to meet Seth Rogen. This is my dream. Um, and then one time I was standing, drinking an aloe juice in the doorway of the basement apartment. He walks by and he just goes, hey. And I was like, hey. That was it. I'm so mad at myself. Why didn't I, like he literally had, he was sitting on a lawn chair like all week, had nobody to talk to. I could have been like, hey, let's become buddies so mad just at myself it up too much. and I didn't say anything to him and then and he's not really on social media he might have Twitter now or something but there was no way to reach him I couldn't just like Instagram him right and then a year later I was uh, they had like CNN citizen reporters I reporters and they they would take questions from people for different celebrities and there was one thing he was doing thing about his movie where he had cancer and it was him and his partner his writing partner and they were taking questions I'm like oh this is my big chance and you had to say your question in 15 seconds so I filmed myself at work going 
hey Seth, I don't know if you remember me, but uh, you were shooting this movie, Take This Waltz in Toronto, and you walked past me and I was drinking aloe juice, and, and you were like, hey, and I was like, hey, and I'm just wondering, like, would we have become friends and I should like really regret this and not talking to you? Or, you know, it wouldn't have happened and, and I should just let it go. And he's like, so you, and then I've got the footage of him going, Oh yeah, no, we would have been great friends. You know, you really, you blew it. I love aloe juice. It's your, oh, it's my favorite oh, thing. And I'm like, ugh. This connection. Yeah, so now I've, I've still got that clip on my YouTube of Seth. So he's kind of is my family. Well, it's yeah. better, like, you know, sometimes it's actually like meeting someone that you adore. I yeah. think the reason that you get so like worked up about it is because what if they're not super nice like that? And yeah, kind of yeah, it for you. that's true. But I don't want to miss up. What's that? What? Hmm? What? Hmm? I didn't say it. Okay, I'll have to watch the tape pack to see what you mm -hmm. said. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, like their childhood hero of yours, and they yeah. kind of act like not that, that. That's true. Okay, yeah. so maybe it's better. <laughs> but he's probably nice. I don't know. Yeah. But I feel like I just want to get big enough, like with my podcast or whatever, that you know what? The celebrities will all just chat. But even not because they're celebrities. I just want nice people. Maybe they're famous, maybe they're not. I don't know. Like you're pretty famous, and I'm talking to you, so. Yeah, some, some people like yeah. to talk. I mean, that was one thing that I think when I was working on Arctic Air and. Um, Adam Beach was playing my, uh, he's playing my uncle, and I would see him interact with fans, and he was always just so, like, down-to-earth, great, gracious, and, like, you know, friendly, and yeah. um, easy to approach, and I noticed that Keanu Reeves is the same way. Yeah, you and, see that all the time. Uh, like, yeah, you can go either way. I mean, some people legitimately have, like, some kind of, like, uh, you know, anxiety and that kind of stuff so you don't want to push it but yeah. it's like generally like I just think that it's an easier way to go like just be friendly and approachable I mean yeah. everyone has a bad day but that's the thing and I realize you know what even if they are nice celebrities they're not gonna I mean you can't be friends with everybody like even people I meet in real regular life like you don't have the chemistry with someone and, oh, we'll keep in touch occasionally but we're not gonna go for drinks every day and hang out and yeah, because like I was interviewing Keegan Michael Key last year on the red oh, carpet. Cool. I drew a little picture of him, and I was like, "So yeah, is that really you on Instagram?" He's like, "Yeah, I run my own Instagram." This oh, really? So I could it's DM really. you, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah." And I'm like, "Like so, like every morning, I can be like, good morning." He's like, "No, let's take it slow. Let's take it slow." <laughs> so uh, I should. That reminds me, oh, though. That's I should. Funny. I, I should wonder if he stopped him. now, though. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like, he's yeah, off his Instagram he's now. Like, he's like, uh, he was no, okay. waiting. He's like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't. That's have, hilarious. Uh, Aww. I always met, I wish that I would have got to say hi to him because I was on a show called Friends from College, uh -huh. and, um, but we didn't work together. I worked with Kobe Smolders though, and she was, <gasps> oops, sorry. She was amazing. So that was cool. She's the, yeah, what is she in? Uh, lots of stuff, man. How she's I Met Your Mother one. made her famous. Oh, yeah, and yeah. And she is also in like, uh, one of those superhero ones. Yeah, I feel like, isn't, yeah. is, is she like uh, Agents of Steel or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or is that, I'm thinking I don't of know. I uh, a, 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 a Gemma Tart Artenton. She was the Captain America girlfriend, I think. Uh, there's, I get them all confused. No, wait, I can picture her as a soldier, like maybe in a Tom Cruise movie. I don't know. She's Canadian too. Colby, Col whatever. Colby Smolders. Colby Smolders yeah. is, from Can is Canadian? Yeah, she's from Vancouver. She's basically my family. Yeah, uh, she's your, like your relative. Hi, Colby. Hello. <laughs> we can be friends. I'm not scary. It'll be cool. <laughs> I'm Sarah approved. We'll, yeah, be, we'll, we'll, yeah. go, we'll have girls brunch together. We'll just hang out. Yeah, exactly. This is all I want. Just have brunches with people every day. It'll happen. Yeah. Just be putting it out there. All I right. love brunch. Oh, so that's, see, that's the thing. And why can't we do brunches like... Why does that be Sunday brunch? Why can't Monday we do brunch? You know, we work on our stuff, we have our brunch, we yeah. brainstorm a bit. Then, okay, now we're going off, we'll check in tomorrow. But would it be as special? Yeah, it's true. If it's every day, then it's like, I'm just getting sick of brunch. Yeah. All right, Sunday brunches. A few years ago in Toronto, I decided I'm going to have Sunday brunch every week and I would post about it and I would get like five or six people out. But I, and we try a different restaurant every time. I feel like that's something to look forward to. I love brunching. Yeah, and then if you go to bed early Saturday, you feel like, okay, well, it's okay, because I'm getting up for brunch. I got something to look forward to. I don't need to party all night and stuff. I miss that. I should have a brunch soon. You should. Today's yeah. Sunday. We didn't do it, but nope. you can maybe next Sunday. But there's always another Sunday. Sarah's brunch. And then you, we could get the the restaurants to sponsor us. It's like, and we're going to promote it. We're at, well, that's a good idea. Maybe yeah. I can get behind that. Then yeah. I have to be a little careful about how many mimosas I yeah, yeah, that'd be dangerous. Maybe start drinking during the video, like because right. we could combine it with a, like we always do a half-hour podcast interview from the brunch. Right. And we're eating and we have mimosas. And by the end of the thing, okay, that's a couple of mimosas. Cheers and, and cheers. Here and we the are. Rest of my day is up to me and my mimosas. Exactly. We're coming to you live from the the Shangri-La restaurant or oh, whatever. Yeah, that'd, be cool. that'd be nice. Oh, we have some eggs Benedict or something. Yeah. There's actually a restaurant around here. I don't know if it's still here, but the Hot House that used to be like that. Yeah, they had an all-you-can-eat buffet. Just uh, 
yeah, just near the St. Lawrence Market there. Oh, cool. Um, Church Street, I think, and it's, huh. yeah. Oh, I just no, love I don't know it, but maybe I'll try and oh, see you it. you should, somewhere. yeah. Because I, every, I haven't been here for a few years, and everywhere I go, I'm like, oh, Za Pizza, I'm going to go in. Oh, no, it's a cannabis place. Like, it's, every, I know. Yeah, it's all. I always think it's going to be like, I was like, oh, what's this place? Is it like a clothing store? Yeah. No. No, but yeah, the pizza place that I used to go to all the time, they've all, everything's closed. Now. It's, it's all become cannabis, cannabis store. stores, or it's a also condo. I've also noticed a lot of, like, um, uh, especially near Young Street, there's like mm. a lot of uh, oh. Asian slash, I think it's mostly Japanese, but like Asian style like uh, toy stores and like oh, just, yeah. just like different. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, there's a pet and beauty store. Pet and beauty. Yeah. And they have just combo. all these different stores that I haven't seen before. There's this one that's like set up like an arcade and you basically just go in, but everything like has a Every game has has a stuffy, a stuffy that you could win. Really? Wow, happy. Happy. Wow. There we go. Happy uh, likes you. Well, that's good. I'm glad they still have stores in Young Street. Cause I was afraid they were going to tear down the whole street and just build condos. Because yeah, it used to have there. such character. It would be like strip bars and arcades and just yeah, seedy little psychic like places. That. That's good. That's good. I like to see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I want to go win a stuffy from that place. All right, we gotta go to the stuffy place. We'll vlog about that. Yeah. Yeah, they're turning it into like Tokyo, I guess, with all these little. Yeah, like little Tokyo. Little to we oh, got my oh. dog a little teepee from one of those pet stores. Oh. It's a really cute one. Oh, you get a little teepee, so it's like a little tent he can sleep in. Yeah. Oh, happy! You're so lucky. Yeah, and it's not appropriation because I am the one allowed to buy it for him. <laughs> because you're. Because I'm indigenous. So you're indigenous. Oh, Dakota. a teepee, right? I was, teepee, I was, I was like still thinking Japan. Tent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Teepees you're allowed to buy, but you couldn't buy them a kimono. No, that would be racist. Right. Okay. So, yeah. but but if you find a Japanese friend who can buy Happy a kimono. Yeah. Or whatever. Then they he sleep can in. wear it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we can just say he's a Japanese dog. Yeah. It's all good. We're so culturally he's diverse kawaii. here. Kawaii. 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 That means so cute in Japanese. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah, we could blow up in Japan with this with our podcast. I'm happy would have everything. to get like better sensibilities about like being on camera and stuff. He's doing pretty good right now though. Yeah, yeah, we're we're cool now. Pretty but chill. but yeah, when neighbor, I don't know, I don't know what he didn't like about your neighbor. That's bizarre. I think he just uh, mm. thinks that he owns this whole roof. That's true. He's like, yeah, hey, who a came white on? Thing. Very territorial. Just takes over. It's a what thing? White thing. He's a white dog. I mean, that's what I thought you said. I'm like, is that what I heard, Brian? Yeah. But, yeah. It's white dogs. Yeah, uh, he's uh, he's he's from French background, but it was actually Spanish that like took the Bichons over here. Oh. And they're very popular. Oh. We'll yeah, it's definitely not indigenous. No. It's like a capital I or a small I. Is there an is there an indigenous breed of dog? Like you uh, must have had. Well, what are those things that pull here. the dog sleds? Um. Yeah, like huskies. Probably yeah. Probably those. Uh. Um. Also, I don't know. Like, when did Newfoundlanders start? Because mm. that's like. That's a good question. Yeah, I'm sure they were after, yeah. you know, colonization I, started, yeah, but they, I mean, yeah. that's where they're from, so. Yeah, that's true. I guess they okay. are indigenous there. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. We'll have to have some dog experts on our podcast and yeah. give us the history of the dogs and yeah. tell us what's, uh, you know, yeah. ethically safe to talk about for dogs or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, and Happy, he's like, he's sometimes he has some um, historical trauma from when... Uh -oh. um, in the French courts, uh, back when there was still um, a monarchy, uh, they used to have Bichon Frises, and so when the French Revolution started, mm. uh, the oh, they the were killing the dogs. Yeah, they what? were killing the dogs. Your muffs. And so he had to, he had to, his great 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 grandfather had to escape on a Spanish ship. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, so you've got like uh, intergenerational trauma. Yeah, but he's got adventurous genes. Like yeah, a survivor. exactly. And he knows how to do um, like a lot of tricks and stuff, and be very polite because he's he's yeah. trained in the French court. That's true. He's sophisticated. Sophisticated. Yeah. Eats with a fork. Very, yeah. very bonjour. Speaks French. Bonjour. Yeah, he does. He speaks Spanish too. Oh, uh, hola. Mm -hmm. I gotta learn Spanish. What languages do you speak? Me, I just speak little bits of this and that, but um, I, I love languages, so yeah. I, I do get to speak a lot of indigenous languages for work, wow. and I really pride myself on learning them as correctly as possible, yeah. and um, so that I can depict them properly and respectfully. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So you're keeping the language alive. Mm -hmm. Uh, what were you doing at the Imaginative Film Festival? Just networking, or did you have a film? Yeah, or not? Uh, I do have. A, I do have a film. It's called Cafe Daughter. How do you have so many films? But okay, yeah. Um, I'm one of the leads in that, yeah. and uh, I'm very excited about it. So if you can go check it out, I, I think it's on October 19th. I don't know. 
it's at 3 p.m. I know that it's at the Jeff Bell Lake. All right. Well, then I'll have to come back for this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I am accredited, so I might as well yeah. use it. What it's am I doing? Cafe daughter. Oh wow. Yeah. It's a CBC film, so it'll of eventually it be on CBC. Oh my God, you are you are the you are just CBC girl. Now I get it. Not only, but you know, no, no, we don't but, have an exclusive agreement or anything. No, but I mean, CBC is the biggest thing I'm in Canada. I'm happy that they like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, be be happy. Like I've always wanted to get in CBC. If I could just get a show, because once you you're in there, you can do anything. You can be on radio. Oh, you could probably like fill in on Q. You could probably be like, oh yeah. You probably should imagine? get me to do that next. Absolutely, they're all. I don't know whatever happened with that show, but uh, I yeah, know. but yeah, or a new one. I feel like or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think there was this girl. I was jealous of her show. Aww. Um I think she was in Winnipeg. Was her name Candy or something? Oh, but didn't yeah, she die or something? Fox, yeah. Yeah. I can't, yeah, I can't, I, um, yeah. She she did pass away. Hmm. So maybe you can get some kind of you know just pitch your show or yeah, whatever. You know. I mean, all the stuff we've even just talked about. Oh, maybe it's like about you know Canadian entertainment or it's Indigenous entertainment in Canada. I met with the host of the, the CBC Morning Show like ten years ago just for coffee, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, if I wanted to pitch th- like do things for CBC Radio, what can I do? He's like. All right, we can pick, I mean, think of some ideas like to do with diversity. And I'm like, I'm not, I, what, what, what can I do? So I was just like, I don't know. But you've got your diversity card. You can just be like, here's it is. Oh, I'm excited. Sure I do have not that, that you're not busy enough. I am pretty busy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's good to have options, though, for the future. Yeah. Things change. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you got to be multi, whatever, multi pronged. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll put the radio pitch in the card. I mean, you can do it like, yeah, once a week, your little radio show. Mm-hmm. Or even, I'll bet they have podcasts. I know they have podcasts, actually. They've got a podcast about podcasts, or a radio show about podcasts. I forget what that was called. That's super called. meta. Yeah. I remember, actually, at the podcast festival at Hot Dogs, I met these women that they show clips of different pot And they were like, oh, yeah, when your podcast is ready, you should let it send us clips. And I'm like, no. So now I've actually got a podcast. i got to send them that. Oh, yeah. So the podcast festival is coming up in October as well. That, okay, I'm dropping these things now. Yeah, yeah, they've actually got, like, a podcast section at Tribeca Film Festival. Wow. Now. So it's like, yeah, so it's, it's a thing really now. A thing. It's All right. Thing. So maybe this is a thing. I just got to mm-hmm. keep churning this out. Yeah. Oh, my definitely. God. This is exciting. And my mm-hmm. parents keep going, why are you doing this podcast? You make money from it? Like, I don't know. I enjoy it. But maybe it will. Blow up. I think you can make money somehow. There is somehow. It's all about you. Sell the package. Get the sponsor. I yeah, don't know. yeah. Whatever your friends say. But what is it like? It's like, you know, like she was like, it's better to have local sponsors, like a store that, but like for a podcast, I and mean, yeah, if it was a if it was a podcast about Toronto cafes or something, it would more likely you know what your sponsor would be. But if I'm just talking to anybody about anything, it's harder. And then you're like Joe Rogan. Well, this is brought to you by ExpressVPN uh, service, like some international website thing. I like thing. ExpressVPN. Oh yeah. Well, that's there we go. Every website or podcast I listen to, it's all brought to you by ExpressVPN. Oh cool. Yeah. So then, but I was thinking too, I could make my, make up my own sponsor. Like you know, I have affiliate links for things like mm-hmm. Amazon, or I got my Amazon shop or whatever. I can just be like, hey, it's brought to you by whatever. Use my promo code. Mm-hmm. Whatever. So I just got to start dropping things. Yeah, for sure. We'll also, yeah, I guess you could look up like. Maybe if you go on a Canadian site and mm. see like what ads are on there. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, who's hey. paying for ads? Who wants to sponsor? Is it, yeah. you know, Athletic Greens powder or whatever? Just yeah. Sort of, or maybe I'll start my own coffee brand. I know YouTubers have. I guess the, you have a white label. Like mm-hmm. you can make your own brands, but that's tough too. But yeah, you know what? Just find something that I like that I use and be like. You know, I'd sit there drinking whatever coffee in every video or something and yeah. give my guest, here's a sample of here's the coffee mug with the blah blah on it. Yeah, and all if right. you like coffee anyway. Then. Yeah, I can't drink it after, I don't know. I had some at 2 o'clock yesterday. I was up all night again. I'm like, damn it. Got to get the decaf, man. Yeah, even the decaf has a bit of caffeine. It I don't does. know. But I want something with antioxidants. Like, rooibos apparently has antioxidants, but no caffeine. That's good, yeah. Got to find something else. You mud, need a tea. Mud water is apparently a big thing. Maybe I get them as a sponsor. It's some kind of mushrooms and something that's like oh, a coffee replacement. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll look at that. I just want to be healthy because i got to have energy, got to be healthy to be able to do all this stuff. Otherwise, you can't do anything. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. All right. Well, we've got lots of ideas here. And, uh, you know, next episode, we'll, we'll have sponsors and all of this. And uh, we'll be sitting at brunch and... Uh, and yeah. happy will be we'll see it well, guarding yeah, guarding everywhere their customer as hunt. if he owns it exactly cool <laughs> well, it's and, a good guard Sorry, and it's, yeah. I guess uh, should I end every podcast well, is there some place where people should go to you or go to your website oh, I guess yeah. you're more of a TV actress I don't know uh, yeah I'm, uh, well you can go on Instagram it's at Sarah Lee MacArthur so it's at S-E-R-A-L-Y-S M-C-A-R-T-H-U-R yeah lots of letters um, also on Facebook and X 
Yeah, and formerly known as Twitter. Yeah, and then uh, my my website is sarahleesmacarthur.com. Very nice. Mm -hmm. There's no other Sarah Lee's MacArthur, so you didn't true. have to get the dot .ca. I could have probably just gone with Sarah Lee's if I would have done it earlier, but that. then like... There's another Sarah Lee's who took it? No, it was like it's like a company and they don't even use it. Oh, that's the know. worst. It's like sure. you're just sitting on it. Oh, it drives Squeeze me crazy. Squeeze you lose. But whatever. <laughs> even, I mean, even Sting can't get at Sting. He's like at official Sting. Like, whatever. Right. Nobody cares. Like even, who's this? Um, there's a big... Oh, it's Cardi B. She's not even Cardi B. Like somebody's sitting on that on Instagram. So she's like, I am Cardi B. So whatever. She's mm -hmm. doing all right. It's, it doesn't matter. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, all right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Nice chatting with you.